A lot of Republicans wanted Indiana Governor Mitch Daniels to run for president this year. Now, a lot of Republicans want Mitt Romney to choose Daniels as his running mate. Joining us from Indianapolis to talk about that and an economic recovery that seems to be stalling is Governor Daniels. And welcome back to Fox News Sunday, sir. Glad to be here. Uh, you finally endorsed Mitt Romney this week, but here's what you said in an interview with the Indianapolis Star. We're going to put it up on the screen. You have to campaign to govern, not just to win. Look at everything through the lens of folks who have yet to achieve. Romney doesn't talk that way. Question, is Romney out of touch with Americans who are struggling in this economy? No, I think he's uh, much more in touch, on, uh, honestly, than the president uh, apparently will ever be. He's been out there. He's been roughed up in the primaries. He's been face-to-face -face with the really serious lingering economic difficulties America faces. If anybody's, you know, detached from the lives of uh, real Americans, if anybody is disconnected from where jobs and wealth come from, it's our president. So, so, so what did uh, you no, mean? Uh, if I mean, may though, sir, what did you mean when you said Romney doesn't talk that way? I'm just saying that uh, he, he's got the right prescription for America. He's, he's meeting uh, the uh, objective that I've hoped our party would meet of offering specific, positive, constructive uh, uh, rates for our debt problem and our slow growth problem. I, as things go along, I just want to encourage him to express these very same principles more often from the standpoint of the young, the poor, those who have yet to uh, start up the ladder of life. It's the very same principles, but... Uh, uh, aimed in a slightly different way, and I know he'll do that. The, the polls uh, are, are pretty clear at this point that uh, the horse race between Obama and Romney is very close, but they're also pretty clear that maybe perhaps because of the primary process and positions he took during the primaries, that uh, Romney trails the president by significant margins among women, among Hispanics, among lower-income workers. How does he reach out to them? Again, I think simply by identifying with the very real problems they're facing, I, I don't think he'd want to trade problems with the president this fall. This economy is in a lousy shape. Everyone knows it. it the only surprise uh, to me is that anyone is surprised that it's still sputtering. And uh, I don't see it. I, I hope I'm wrong, but I don't see it much better just a few months from now. And so um, Governor Romney, I believe, is already getting uh, good marks for... Uh, his uh, superior point of view on the thing that bothers Americans most. It bothers everyone, all those groups you just mentioned, um, uh, as much as anyone. And so he's got a great opening, I think, and I predict that he'll seize it. All right. I'm going to get to the economy in a moment, but I want to talk about some of these specific groups. Because, for instance, with Hispanics, and yes, of course, the economy is the overwhelming issue, but during the campaign, uh, Romney said that he opposes the DREAM Act, he supports the Arizona crackdown, on illegals, he said that illegals should self-deport, uh, and a, a lot of Hispanics are expressed concern about those positions. He can't just say, I didn't mean it. I don't think he has to at all. I think that, you know, he has nothing to, he gives away nothing with regard to the president, who's been, I believe, um, uh, very uh, uh, duplicitous sometimes on this very same subject. But I think he's got to speak the language, honestly, not narrow, of narrow uh, broadcasting to narrow casting, let's say, to individual groups as much as uh, the language of unity that talks about the issues that uh, unite us all, the threats that menace us all, and uh, try to bring Americans together. You know, that quote you put up, Chris, the most important part to me is the notion of campaigning to govern, meaning try to assemble people who may disagree about other things about the, the, the largest national uh, challenges and objectives we have. Let's deal, uh, and I know you're not going to particularly enjoy this, but let's deal with the question of you as a possible running mate for Romney. During the, the run-up to uh, the, the primary campaign, you're, you made it clear that your wife and your daughters were not especially enthused at the idea of you running for president. Would they feel differently about your running for vice president, which is a shorter and less intrusive campaign? We haven't had the conversation, and I don't expect to have it. Uh, you know, a lot went into that uh, uh, n decision not to run uh, very specifically that I promised the people of my state eight full years, and I, I like living up to that commitment, uh, showing that it uh, was real. So 
Uh, no, I don't. Uh, I think this is a hypothetical question that'll probably stay that way. All right, but let me ask you directly: If Romney asks you to be his running mate, will you accept? Chris, you'll remember what uh, William F. Buckley said when he ran for mayor of New York, and they asked him if he, if he, what he'd do if he won. He said, "Demand a recount." Uh, I think I would um, uh, demand reconsideration and send uh, Mr. Romney a list of people I think could could suit better. All right, let me ask you: Who would be at the top of the list? Who should he pick? Oh, I've seen a lot of names, and I like them all. I, I don't want to uh, ruin anybody's chances uh, this morning by singling a, him or her out. But, uh, you know, there's a lot of talent in the Republican Party. A lot of, of uh, new governors and young uh, legislators um, have joined uh, our ranks uh, in the last few, uh, just few years. And I think he's got a wide range of people to pick from. I, I have full confidence he'll find the best one. Let's turn to the economy, which you touched on earlier, and where it is right now. There seem to be signs for the last few months that the economy and the recovery was picking up. More jobs were being created each month. The unemployment rate was steadily coming down. But now in the last month, uh, there seems to be a sense from a variety of signs that job creation, housing, uh, that the recovery is stalling. What, what's your sense of where the national economy is now? that it's stalling and it never really had much momentum even when uh, consumption seemed to be going up if you look one level deeper people were digging into savings to make those purchases last year income in america rose um, slower than inflation people actually lost purchasing power you know our state happens to be one where the workforce is growing but all around us there are states chris where uh, people have simply given up looking for work. Everyone now knows that if we had the same size workforce we had when this all started, unemployment, as reported, would be 11 percent, not 8 point X. So, um, you know, this is still very uh, tough slog in, in most of America. And honestly, uh, I can't name one thing that the, this administration's done that hasn't uh, leaned against jobs and against growth so to that extent to the extent national policy has an effect it's not really a surprise well let me pick up on that though what about the obama argument that he inherited a mess from george w bush and that if romney gets into office and enacts the policies he's espousing that he will simply return us to that mess uh... governor romney has endorsed paul ryan's budget uh... in principle ryan cuts tax rates for the rich without specifying which loopholes he would close. Ryan cuts non-defense discretionary spending by 19% in 2014, which the Obama campaign says would mean major cuts in Head Start, medical research, and health care for the poor. So how about the Obama argument, what Romney will do is give tax cuts to the rich and spending cuts to the poor and the middle class? First of all, the president did inherit a mess, but it's not the first time that's ever happened. He's done less with that mess than anyone else ever did. Ronald Reagan inherited a bigger one and had a roaring economy already by this stage. This is the weakest recovery, at least in the post-war period, if not ever, uh, given the depth of the recession that we were in. With regard to how we get out of it, you can start by saying we couldn't do worse than the policy mix of this president. Gigantic new spending, gigantic new taxes. Uh, a uh, takeover of 18 or 19 percent of the economy in the Obamacare bill. Um, we, anything would be better than that. Now, with regard to the Ryan budget, it's certainly a much better starting point than what we have now. Yes, fill in the blanks. Yes, let's, let's describe exactly uh, uh, where or at least the extent to which the tax loophole should be closed. But, uh, you know, the, the president, apparently nothing in his life has... Uh, um, acquainted him with where jobs and wealth come from. He has no ear at all for the small businesses of this company, country. They're the ones in the receiving end of all his new taxes. And, um, you know, frankly, I, I guess he never is going to get it. Finally, Barack Obama won Indiana at, four years ago, the first time that any Democrat had one year state since Lyndon Johnson in 1964. What are the chances that Barack Obama can win Indiana again this November? Slim and none. Uh, I want to give credit to a very savvy strategy in 08. They, they were in a very competitive primary here, spent a lot of time and money, had a running head start, saw an opportunity and capitalized on it. But um, it, it will take a massive change, I believe, in, in the view of, of Hoosiers for him to repeat that this year. The, the, um, 
um, kind of policies he's pursued have been very, very hard on people out here in the middle of the country. And uh, my fellow citizens seem to see that. Every indication I've seen says they are very open to change and, and a new uh, a direction in, the f in favor of uh, more limited uh, government and a more pro-growth uh, economic policy. So you think that Indiana is basically locked up pretty tight for Mitt Romney in November? I think you've got to go earn it, of course, and I, I hope he will do that. But you asked me what the president's chances are, and I'll just, I, I, I think I'm on firm ground saying they're not too good. Governor Daniels, we're going to have to leave it there. Thank you so much, as always, for talking with us, and please come back, sir. I'd like that. Up next.